let's do a little word association. If I mention the word risk, what do you associate with that? For you, is it, is it fear-based? Is it uncertainty? Is it a gamble? Does it make you worry? Danger? Or, or are you like me? I tend to think of it as something positive. Risk is stimulating. It's rewarding. It makes life interesting. It's energizing. So what do you think? I think what you need is trust to have risk be something that's positive in your life. It's trust that things are going to work out, that risk is worth taking for the reward. Really, your risk tolerance, the way that you balance risk against the trust and the reward that comes from taking a risk, defines a lot of the decisions in your life, doesn't it? So where do you get this information from? Where do you come to your feeling about risk and reward? Well, of course, we're born with pretty much a blank slate. Our parents are there teaching us about danger, right? Don't put that in your mouth. Don't play with scissors. Don't play with fire. Don't talk to strangers. At the same time, they're giving us positive messages about being independent or trust. If a father's throwing his child up in the air, he's just not trying to terrorize the child, but teach the child, I'm going to catch you each time. Trust is an important thing, and parents want to teach their children to trust. But then once we get out of a house, we're really on our own to weigh risk and reward. I think we do a pretty bad job of it. When I got out of the house myself, the first hobby I took up was skydiving. This is a picture of me in my cool jumpsuit a few years ago, quite a few years ago. <laughs> to the extent that you've ever thought about skydiving, you probably fit in one of two camps. Maybe you're somebody who thinks, skydiving, that sounds like fun. I would love to try that sometime. And I can tell you that skydiving is exhilarating. You are really in the moment. And haven't you always wanted to fly around with other people? It really is totally liberating. But then there's plenty of people who think, why would you risk your life? We have enough danger already. Why jump out of a perfectly good airplane? Right? And that's. Very, I think more people think of that that way than the ones who want to jump. I wasn't, I, I would say that there's a dirty secret about skydiving. As a skydiver, I can tell you, we don't like to admit it, skydiving is actually pretty safe. This is a statistics from the U.S. Parachute Association. In three million jumps in the most recent year, there were only 19 deaths. 0.63 fatalities per 100,000 jumps. To put that in context, I looked for something that had similar fatality statistics, and I found it. It's a 10-year study of tennis players in Germany. <laughs> there were 1.7 million tennis players. 15 people died playing tennis. <laughs> Interestingly enough, my father suffered a serious injury a couple years ago playing tennis. He went to hit an overhead and fell over backwards and got a concussion that put him in the hospital for a week. I've been trying to convince him to take up skydiving to be safer, <laughs> but he's still risking his life out on the court even at age 83. I'm not really drawn to things that are dangerous, but I do like things that seem to be dangerous. About the same time as I was skydiving, I took a trip across the country. I went from Pennsylvania to Alaska and back, a seven-week trip. I did it all hitchhiking. Now, when you think about hitchhiking, I think a lot of people think about axe murderers and serial killers and the worry about being picked up by somebody <laughs> who looks like this. But that wasn't my experience at all. It was a wonderful experience. In fact, the main risk I found was being stuck out in the middle of an Iowa cornfield for hours waiting for a ride. This is my traveling companion, Mark. We did have to wait occasionally. However, over that time, I did that 8,000-mile trip on a few hundred dollars, and I met hundreds of wonderful people. It really was a, a tremendous experience. People think we don't hitchhike anymore because it's dangerous. You don't find people hitchhiking. But this is the FBI Uniform Crime Report, showing in the last 20 years, violent crime has declined from 734 per 100,000 population to 403. 
That's a 45% decline in 20 years. People say, well, we don't hitchhike because it's dangerous, more dangerous, but we're in a safer world. But do you feel safer? I don't feel safer. I don't think any of us feel safer than we used to. So what's happened? What's the difference, let's say, in the last 20 years? I'll point a finger directly at the internet. You know, it used to be there have always been negative things happening in the world, but we had a filter. We could only read so much in a magazine, a newspaper. There were three evening news shows. Now we have 24-hour news channels and access to all the bad news in the world 24-7 on the internet. Humans have a negativity bias. What that means is we have more electrical activity in our brain when we hear negative news than when we hear positive news. Our ancestors that survived were the ones that were attuned to danger, so we are hardwired to pay attention to negative things. When you hear negative stories, and we are attuned to stories, the more you hear stories, the more probable they appear. So when we hear about a stranger abducting a child in California, or a plane crash in the Soviet Union, or a shark attack in Australia, all of which are very unlikely occurrences, it starts to seem like that's what happens. We hear that, we glom onto that negative stuff, and what has happened is we've designed the structure of worry. I think we're swimming in this, really I call it a soup of paranoia, which is not based on fact, but on the fact that we pay attention to this negative news and we get it all the time. So what has happened is the world is out of balance. We have looked at all this danger and risk and it outweighs the reward. So here we are putting gates around our communities and bars on our windows and we are withdrawing, we are becoming isolated. I wanna introduce the idea of contagious trust. I think that paranoia is contagious, but how can we spread trust? Where does trust come from? I think it comes from personal connection. How can you make personal connection with new people? I've always been one to go overboard on things, so the way I do it is I host total strangers in my house. That's through couch surfing. I don't know if you're familiar with couch surfing. It's an international network of people who host strangers in their house just for hospitality's sake. When I tell people about couch surfing for the first time, often their first question is, well, have you had any weirdos? Because we all go to that negative place, don't we? In fact, my experience has been absolutely wonderful. I've hosted over 100 people in my house. This is just some of them from all over the world. It's been absolutely wonderful and a great way to, to spread trust for me. Couchsurfing isn't for everybody, though. So what, we, what can we do on an individual daily basis to spread trust? Well, until we all have QR codes tattooed to our forehead, the best way to connect with people is to have conversations. So I'm gonna suggest you do what your parents said you shouldn't do. Talk to strangers. Now, it's a little bit scary, but you have that opportunity all the time, and people want to connect. So when you're at a baseball game, or in line at the store, or let's say in an audience of people listening to talks, the people that are around you have every bit as interesting and compelling a personal story as you do. Why wouldn't you want to know what that is? Because I think that if we do that, we're all comfortable with the group of people that we are around regularly. But reach out. So I encourage you to go find a stranger. And in fact, uh, if it's somebody you find intimidating, all the better. And ask them about themselves. Don't ask, like, what do you do for a living? Ask them, what are you passionate about? What is unique about you? You see, I think that if we did that, we could start rebalancing this paranoid world that we have. We, we worry too much. We worry more than we should. Start talking to the people out there that you don't know. Now, I know it's scary to do that. We all have this reluctance to approach strangers. For me, it wasn't that I thought they'd do me harm, but I thought that they might reject me or be indifferent. 
And I've found through experience, it's absolutely the opposite. People want to connect. Now, it's scary to do it, but I can tell you, it's a good kind of risk. It's a stimulating kind of risk. It's not that fearful kind of risk. So I want you to do it. And I can tell you, as somebody who's stepped over the edge a few times, after 30 jumps, I got over my fear of skydiving. After a couple days of hitchhiking, I stopped worrying about the next ride. After a dozen couch surfers had come to my house, I just looked forward to the next dozen. So get out there, find a stranger, do it right now. Find out about them. You'll find that they'll appreciate your interests, and you'll find that the rewards for you in connection far outweigh the risks. Trust me.